Hello. <laughs> the music and I was like, what's happening? Are we there? It felt short. <laughs> We're not ready. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. How's it going? It's friends? so nice to see you all. It really is. Yes. It's just like, and then it's like I'm trying to like look at the camera, but then I'm also trying to read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a case of the yawns. It's just so oh, winter. No. It's so yeah. winter right it now. It suddenly turned to winter just like in an instant like last it, week. It just, it sounds cold outside. Like, you know, <laughs> like you, there's a sound, a particular sound of cold, and we are experiencing that. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that? We also had like a howling wind the last few days, which the is just like of kind of eerie and chilly and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Derek, I do indeed need coffee and cake, 100%. I know. I'm trying to be it's so true. good and not have coffee too much. <laughs> uh, okay, so today on the stage, we are going to be talking about vibrato. We're going to be talking about how you can apply that and have some fun with it in the classic autumn mm -hmm. leaves. Um, but before we get to all of that, um, I just wanted to like take a moment to just check in about the, the Musora Unified performances that we did. Mm -hmm. Because that was pretty wild. Yes. Um, were you guys there? Did you see those? I think several of you were I think there. Several, I am pretty sure. Several of sure. you were, were there. We had such a good time singing together. Oh. And, yeah. Like, and we just have to... So what I'm most happy about was the experience personally for me of having Julia there um, with the with the way she put the harmonies together and set everything up. It was <laughs> so, so it just felt so much more fun than singing, you know, by myself. Mm -hmm. And um, it is it should be posted somewhere. It's Derek. posted just in our Q and A section, I think, of the lives where all the lives go. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and so well, all that to say, you guys, you have to make sure you're doing the harmony lessons. It's if you're true. here, do the <laughs> harmony lessons because it just makes you that much more useful <laughs> as a singer, but you'll also have a ton of fun with it. Yeah, so I you will be wanted... a more versatile singer if you can add harmonies. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as there's two or more people singing, if everyone's just singing melody, it's going to be, uh, first of all, a mess, un unless you're, like, perfectly rehearsed. Yes. <laughs> but where's, like... Whereas a harmony can just kind of come along and like support and just like complete, you know, the, it's, yeah, so. It was so good. It I also got recommend. me on my game too, mm. because I couldn't just take like artistic liberties <laughs> with the melody I was singing. Right, you I can't. Have, no, you like, Lisa, this is the note. And I'm like, oh, yeah. sorry, Julia, yes. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> Um, so that was um, something that was kind of exciting. And silly. you know what? We also have, um, we have to, we have to show you this. We should. Like speaking of performances and singing, this one doesn't have harmonies, but I know we, we talked about Haley last week, but just, you guys have to hear this. You have to. So just check this out. I hear the train are coming. It's rolling down. She's so good. She's so good. So I hope like, you all were listening for that little little hints of vibrato that we were getting from her voice in there. Yes. <laughs> so mm -hmm. much style. It was so good. You know what happened this weekend? I got so many um, Insta stories. I was like seeing from all these artists that I follow from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, um, yes. Because there was an induction ceremony this weekend, and I was really looking for a good clips to show you, but there weren't any yet because I think they're posting the performances mm. later. But... Um, there was a moment where, so Dolly Parton was one of the people inducted, Eminem, Eminem um, Duran Duran, um, a whole bunch of people, of course. So it was a performance um, that for me was memorable that hopefully I can show you whenever there is a good clip of it, but it was um, all of them singing Jolene. So Dolly Parton, mm. um, Judas Priest. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Brandy Carlisle. <gasps> of course. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Cheryl Crow. No. Um, Pink. What? Yeah. 
uh, Pat Benatar. Like, it was just, like, insane. It's just, oh, my gosh. It was so good. Were you watching it? <laughs> no, I just kind of saw it after the oh! fact on Instagram. And I was like, oh, I wish I had seen it live. That sounds really cool. Um, so maybe look it up, maybe. <laughs> yeah, keep your eyes open for that. Yeah. Pat Benatar is connected as well. Yeah. That's amazing. And then... I was like, how many of her songs do I know? Then I looked it up and was like, oh, yeah, no, all of them. <laughs> it's just, just one of those persons, like one of those people where I'm like, do I do I know you do. much about them? It's like, no, no, you know every one of her songs. <laughs> so. um, hey, Dan is saying that um, she spent the morning on Smule today. I totally believe Ooh. you guys. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, so um, we've had a small account, small, small account, I don't never know how to never say it, know. Um, for a while where I've been putting videos out just for people to, to sing along and get you singing. Um, now we have an official like educator account on small where Lisa's going to put out um, just little instructional videos to the entire small community really um, cool. and we'll put out some more songs. So keep an eye on it. Um, it's just called Sing Yo Sing Yo Lessons. Lessons. Yeah, go find us on there. We're under Sing Yo Lessons. Julia and I will both be posting yeah. regular performances on that account for you guys to just kind of yeah, sing Yo exactly. Lessons for you guys to jump into because we would love to do that with all of you. We think that's really important just to be singing and this is a fun way to totally. do it. Um, as well as, yeah, there will be tutorials that we just do little things that we throw out there hmm. on Smule just to kind of quick tips. introduce ourselves to that community because mm -hmm. we think it's pretty it's awesome. It's a community of singers. <laughs> we want to be where the singers are. Yeah. We want to be where, where the singers, singers are. are. That was ideally sung. Um, Smooth nice. so is a karaoke app. It's free to install and you can make a free account. Um, it's free for you to like join other people's songs. I think it only costs the like, gift to sign up for a VIP account that costs money if you want to like start songs or invite other people to sing with you. Um, but just to join, it's totally free. So just kind of check it awesome. out. Awesome. Yes. Okay, so moving a little bit, this is related, unrelated. <laughs> yes. We're gonna be focusing on vibrato today. So this okay. is what we're talking about, this is what we're learning mm -hmm. about. Um, but I'm gonna tie this into okay. November 7th being Joni Mitchell's <gasps> birthday. Yes! Two major Joni Mitchell fans <laughs> here. Um, and so I want you guys, Julia's prepared a clip of both sides now through the mm -hmm. years. You've got here 1969. Yeah, so I think she wrote this song when she was 23. <sighs> And uh, uh, she wasn't even the first person to release her own song. It was somebody else that first released it. She then, like, so we're going to watch her sing it in 1969. Then later again in 2000 when she's singing it, arranged for an orchestra. And then later again, just uh, this year at the Newport Folk Festival at the Joni Jam on stage with everybody. So let's have a look. And listen for vibrato. See if you can mm. notice them. And get some Kleenex because you'll probably cry. <laughs> Wheels. The dizzy dancing way that you feel as every fairy tale comes real. I looked at love that way. Rose and flow 
rose of angel hair And ice cream castles in the air And feather canyons everywhere I've looked at clouds that way But now they only block the sun And they rain and they snow on everyone So many things I would have done But clouds got in my way I really don't know clouds I really don't know clouds at all Ah! Can you imagine what it would be like no. to be on that stage no. with Joni Mitchell and, and not to mention all the other like legends on that stage <laughs> like the jazz and that's Brand uh, brandy carlisle right next to her in the flower suit of course of course i would wear that of course. Um, <laughs> and um yeah just so amazing but isn't it interesting how her voice really has changed so much from mm -hmm. when she was young i mean so when she was recording that in 69 i think she's 24 ish or so it uh, yeah ish, like yeah, early yeah. 20s and so high yeah she so it's a totally so different key then um i think she sings uh Wait, she sings it in either F or G, and then Ooh. later, um, she sings it in D and then C. So it like moves down quite a bit, and you can really hear like the bottom of her range just being like kind of thick and full. It was so, so resonant, right? It so was so resonant, very different in tone. I also thought the like the two thousand performance had like stylistically was just so very different. Right now we have a string orchestra and she's doing a couple of different, like... Her phrasing. It's, yeah, the phrasing is so Shaking. different. The tone is different. Yeah. I thought lots of sections were a little bit wider even. Yes. When she, like, to me it just sounded like 90s pop vocals a little bit. It's huh? just like, oh, I, there's some influence here. It's yes. It's really interesting. And, and then that know. last one, I don't know. You just have to, like... You, I feel like when that's happening, it's like a sacred moment. Absolutely. Every time, it's every like, time. I've watched those performances a number of times already. I'm sure every you could have heard a pin drop on that stage. Oh, yeah. It's hard not to cry. I don't yeah. know what it is. She ah. is just such a legend. And I think part of that is her career having spanned like mm -hmm. decades, right? Her songwriting having, having been so influential. And always so uniquely her and never like, okay. yes, we hear flavors of other things. Joni's songwriting is maybe the most unique, like always recognizable. It's so weird. If you've ever tried to sing a Joni Mitchell song, it's so stupid. Okay. It like jumps around crazy high and crazy low. And then like the chords are moving this way, but now this way. And it's like, like if you're a musician and... You know, the, the more you get into music, the more you can kind of predict, like, you know, chords <laughs> and melodies. And then you <laughs> you try to sing along or play along with oh, the Joni Mitchell song. is like, no, There's straight up bananas. I'm trying to remember which album I bought because I went to a record store where you buy records. Yes. <laughs> and you I remember finding again. a Joni Mitchell album in there and being like, I've, this looks old. Right. Maybe it was Cord and, no, it wasn't Cord and Spark. It was earlier than that. Maybe it was, I'm looking at all the album covers right now because it was the weirdest thing I have ever heard. It was from the 70s, no oh. doubt about it. 100% from the 70s. I'm thinking maybe, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to find out. I'm going to go through my records. But anyways, it's worth listening to because it'll keep you on your toes and it'll definitely have you listening to music differently. Mm -hmm. So it's time for us to now get into our singing. Okay. Everybody. <coughs> We're going to warm up together and we're going to do exercises that specifically focus on vibrato. So just before we begin, vibrato is an oscillation in pitch. So if you were to sing, ah, uh, you're not getting vibrato. If you're going to go, ah, uh, do you hear the, the switch? It's a little easier to hear mm -hmm. from here. Ooh, ooh, no vibrato. Ooh, do you hear it? 
Yeah. Here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So vibrato is one of those things that is generally speaking a, a result of balanced singing. Right. If I am too tight here, ooh, I'm not going to give vibrato. If I relax, ooh. Yeah, there have like there's several factors that have to be in place for yes. vibrato to kind of show up naturally. And it really does have to sort of show up naturally. Like you can kind of encourage it, but you can't force it. No. Because you can instantly hear when a vibrato is really forced, oh. right? So vibrato doesn't work when you're like really tense and really tight because mm. it will sound like a goat. Or it also doesn't work if you're like too relaxed and all is all air. Like if you're all breath, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> um, so there has to be kind of the perfect balance between breath and resistance and um, yeah. Just, we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna find it. It can be a, a challenge for lots of people when they're like, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> I don't know how to start it. Maybe this will help. And yeah. if it doesn't, you'll have some things you can return to to practice. Mm-hmm. Okay, most important number one though. <laughs> Three of them. I know, I've been crazy today. to do. <laughs> Did anybody else get a tickly nose? So much. <laughs> ah, it's fine. Okay, we're gonna hum and we're gonna go. Ooh, let's find a fun pattern for today. We're gonna go. Um. Mm, what? You know, people like when we switch up the uh, scales. <laughs> I'm sure they love it. <laughs> Is that sarcastic? K-Fox and Tim says challenge is good and Megan says we have permission. Okay. Okay. Should we do like a whole alternate like alternate routine section with all different scales? Yeah, all the craziest (laughs) scales. Oh man. Okay, so let's work a little bit on vibrato. I want to select a vowel like ooh and actually one of the things I want to do to maybe help us find it is a little bit of uh, the contrast game. So I want everybody to sing a really not too tense but I want to get kind of like a Ooh, give me a squeezy ooh. For a nice straight tone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also then we're going to release it into a relaxed space and then that might give you that contrast that you ooh. need. I like that. To understand the difference. So let's all do this together. Nice squeezy. Ooh. One more time. Ooh. Okay, now this time I want you to think dopey, relaxed. Ooh. ooh like almost like a yawn or an owl. Ooh, and see if you can relax into vibrato on the very end of that phrase. Mm-hmm. Shine bright, Tim, shine bright. So we're gonna go. <laughs> ooh, ooh, and we'll bring it up. Ooh, be bratty, and then. Ooh, 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 
contrast, I think. Sometimes you'll tr you're trying to do something and you can't even tell if you're doing it, but then like you, doing both ends of the extreme oh, sometimes helps you to like know where you where you what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I fully agree. So was anybody feeling any vibrato in that? Um, let us know in the chat. I want to go here now. We're gonna go. And you're putting vibrato on every note. Every single note. Okay. Nice work, Anna. Nice work, Shree. Okay. Yay, Dad. Awesome. Yay, Megan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here, really relax through here. Now, I wanna remind you guys that the, the state of everything counts. So if you have a tight, intense tongue, if you're holding tension in your cheeks, if your jaw is too close, this can all impact your ability mm -hmm. to find that vibrato. So bring curiosity to each and every one of these shapes. If you're not finding your vibrato here, ooh, then by this note, maybe you wanna relax your jaw just a bit more. Ooh. And if you're still not finding it, what's your tongue doing? Maybe relax that. Mm -hmm. And just be curious and play with it. One more. Now, an example of what that would sound like if you were tight. So I don't have enough space here. I'm a little too loud, a little too much um, resistance on my vocal cords. I want to relax that a little bit too. Hoo! So everybody like, woo, hoo! That's the energy. Hoo! Keep going. Hoo! You let it happen. So to lose the vibrato, you have to probably add a little more resistance um, to prevent that vibrato from happening. So we're going to do an exercise now. Same scale. But this time, we'll have vibrato on the first note. So vibrato. First and third. No straight. Vibrato. Straight. Okay. It's tricky. I'm bad at this. I think this is so helpful though to try to sing straight and then vibrato, straight and vibrato, just so that you know what you're actually doing to start or stop your vibrato. You know? Yes. So this is really good to hear and feel the difference. Yes. Okay, try a couple more. to get into like that little bit of a uh, mindfulness a new level of mindfulness as you approach it um mm. good job mike and trudy yeah it's very subtle um and some people seem to have more control of their vibrato than others mm -hmm. um some people seem to be able to like oscillate faster or more slowly um and for me i just feel like it kind of always sits in the same <laughs> sort of vibrational pace Ogma is saying, can you explain the difference between tremolo and vibrato? I have in mind that vibrato is a slight variation in pitch and tremolo a variation in breath flow. I think I think you're right. Tremolo. Are we talking about like I think, pulsating? I think tremolo is usually a word used when you're speaking of like more of like a physical, like not a voice, but like yeah, it's an emotion use, that a violin might make. Yeah, we often use tremolo, I think, to talk about guitars, for example. So oh, it's really okay. common. Yeah, yeah. So it's true that I think a vibrato is like a slight oscillation in pitch, kind of ca like caused by like the vibrating muscle layer around your vocal cords. It happens when you're relaxed, when you're at ease, when you're at balance. Um, but it is not like a pulsating of air. No. <laughs> it's not a trill. You're not like oscillating ooh, that much ooh, that you're at the next note that happens in classical music a lot, where you're going, ooh, 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 ooh. that's not actually vibrato as a trill. <laughs> when your vibrato is like 
really fast, the new Dolly Parton. Yes. When you were about it, it was really slow, we call it like a like a wobble almost. Cause Brandy it's like, Carlisle. Yeah. <laughs> when it's like, oh, it's like, okay, I can hear it, but it is so like slow and like wide that it's like, what? It My moving. gosh, what's happening? <laughs> um, I'm seeing here that vibrato deals with a change in pitch, not necessarily like from A to B, but the it's spaces very in between. Slight. Yeah, yeah. And tremolo deals with a change in volume. Yeah. So mm. that, is, that is interesting. We'll do a little more digging into that. That's yeah. a really good question, Agma. <laughs> It, the vibrato is a little elusive for some because it's like, oh, how do I? I can't see it. I can't like turn it on or off. <laughs> Damien, you do have a slow vibrato. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan, you can practice trills. So that's the other thing is like it can kind of help your body understand the feeling of vibrato to do a trill. Ooh. Yeah, even though that's not really what we're going for in the end, it's helpful for you to like start feeling it's like, ooh, can I make my voice a little shaky? <laughs> Yeah, just to like loosen it up and for your voice to to start Let feeling go. like exactly. It's like, ooh, can I move freely that way? We're okay. Just the same as it's like it can be helpful to actually shake your body to go ooh and see if you can keep going with your voice after you stop moving. <laughs> A couple of weird little tricks to like get our minds around kickstarting it, you know? And Cuthbert, when he does a ton of vibrato when she sings, I will always love you. Oh, Absolutely. So much. So much. But so, like, hers is so, like, refined and controlled. She's perfect. It's just so her good. Her voice is what I say is or was? Is? Um, Her voice is still that. There we go. On um, recordings. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So, there's a little warm-up. There's a little bit of exercising on Excellent. vibrato. Excellent. How do we feel? Do our voices feel warmed up? I feel warmed up. Sue H says, some singers' jaws move during doing vibrato. It's called the gospel jaw. <laughs> it's a thing. It has a name. And there's, I think there are singers who, for example, like Whitney Houston, was really famous for doing this. And I think to really help Ooh. make her vibrato more dramatic, right? <laughs> um, like Mariah Carey does this too. Yeah. It's really not, it's not that necessary. Like, that's not a place where you should start. No. Um, I mean, you can. But it's it's really maybe you don't. <laughs> I also think like in some cases would if you were like singing a really intense note and everything was in perfect balance, I feel like that sound energy could actually cause some yeah. subtle movement in, yeah, maybe. in your jaw. If you were actually fully relaxed, I think that's a possibility. And I think it also can cause your larynx to move yes. just slightly, right? Like I'll feel it when I'm doing a, maybe a more dramatic vibrato, like I can feel it moving a bit. Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, okay, so we're going to take that vibrato now. Let's sing a song. We're going to sing a song, but we're going to do this because this is a oh. funny story. I've done this song with piano. Okay. Actually, no, I don't even think I, I taught this one in piano. Somebody else did. Okay. Um, but we thought, well, Julia thought it would be fun to practice our vibrato in a jazz standard. Yeah, why not? Okay, so this is, um, oh, hi. Oh, here you are. Um, oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, okay, this is um, Autumn Leaves. I think, okay, one of the things I think is helpful to practice your vibrato is singing along with people who have a really noticeable vibrato. Yes. So, for example, sing along with, like, an opera singer, um, just pretend. <laughs> or, like, jazz singers can sometimes oh, really lean yes. into that vibrato. They'll do, like, a little vibrato, like, a at small one at the end, phrase. right? So I thought it might be a nice... Um, nice way to practice this is just singing a jazz standard, Autumn Leaves, because it's autumn, and there are leaves, and there are leaves. <laughs> so you guys can sing along, and you know, Julia and I will kind of go back and forth on this a little bit, but listen to where we're integrating the vibrato. Okay, I have to think about it a little bit. You just do it naturally. Yeah. I feel like I don't have the um, biggest vibrato, so I don't know if it's as noticeable maybe yeah. as yours. I don't know. <laughs>
to she would do um, some amazing solo <laughs> jazzy solo. And we would all be just whisked I can, away. I can only fake my way through this. <laughs> We're doing a great job of faking this. Okay, so should I apply vibrato to every note all the time everywhere, Lisa? Um, well, if you did, It's too much. Like, it's too much. <laughs> I mean, I think in classical music, there's a lot more vibrato kind of everywhere. Uh, it feels more appropriate or more like... Yeah. In pop music, much less vibrato, much more straight singing. Um, musical theater, lots of vibrato. <laughs> Good um, morning, Baltimore! That's your go-to. I just love Broadway. it so much. I love it so much. Everything it's about great. that makes me feel delighted. <laughs> Um, okay, so yes, you want to use this sparingly. So I could do um, the falling leaves drift by my window. Ooh, so so I held the window and then I found the vibrato on the mm, ooh. That's a great way to do it to like start a note straight because. It's always easier to find the the actual correct pitch on a straight note. It's much harder if you're starting a note on a vibrato. It's like, ah. Oh, Where am I? Like, what am I doing? Right. So start a note straight and then open it up into a vibrato and it sounds beautiful. It sounds intentional. It sounds yes. like, like what I love is when it sounds placed. Like you didn't I'm just have a, this. Right. Exactly. You didn't just have a vibrato all the time. It's like, no, no, let me... Kind of, this is like taking people on a journey. It's, it's a like, spice. Ooh, this note opens up at the end. It becomes bigger as the longer I hold it. And I don't know. It's lovely. Yeah. You can also place it like, um, the, the holy leaves on drift. Drift by my window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where I feel the placements work really well. Mm -hmm. And once you get good at it, it can be super fun to sing a vibrato into more of a closed shape. Um, when Dagmar is saying, I find E very easy to vibrate, e. but when Do stays straight. Because ah is such an open vowel, maybe. So e try the to onset your vibrato when you get into the ooh part when of O. There it is. So window, window, right at the very end, that yeah. last moment. Mm. Um, I think that will definitely help. Ooh. Clever, says Dagmar. Clever, clever, clever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we sing it one more time, just for fun? Yeah. We absolutely Do you guys want to sing along? Please sing along, everybody. Please? Everybody here sings. Please. Try to play this correctly. <laughs> it's a lot. There's a lot of the chords in this song. Oh, the sevens and the Cassidy version of this song. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. That takes you in a different direction um, entirely. Yeah. The song is such a like a classic jazz standard that there's a million covers Maybe a of billion. it. Maybe a billion. Yeah, probably. Possibly one yeah. billion. Nat King Cole has um, a very famous version of this. or um, mm. Many people. And yeah. Iris says there is so much more vibrato in the Ooh, French version. What makes the French more vibrato-y? I think 
it's just because they're more maybe cool. all their speeches more are narrow. <laughs> Iris, will you you should do that? You should, Iris, you should sing it in French for us. Oh, Ooh, Nat King Cole. I do think that his version is lovely. Yes. He um, can do no wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys, is there any questions about vibrato or yes. anything that you guys would like to ask? Or, uh, no. <laughs> Tim is saying some French words. I don't know them. <sighs> Les feuilles d'automne. Okay, that makes sense. French is so hard to sing because there's so many things uh, you're just not singing. <laughs> so many syllables we have to ignore. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, okay, hold on. What was the... Oh, oh, we could do this thing while we wait for questions. Yes. That's okay. very important. So, uh, the next segment of the stage, a crowd favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to present to you the student of the week. Ooh. It's Shruti. Shruti! Congratulations! Yay! I think Shruti's here today. Um, yeah, congratulations, Shruti. Uh, Shruti is just um, starting, like, I think she just did a whole challenge where she did just a warm up every day. Love that. And now she's starting her, like, 30 day practice challenge where she's posting a lot of videos in her thread. And, like, her voice is actually, like, very special, something else. So Aww. I can't wait for you to hear um, lots of really, really beautiful videos, lots of beautiful songs. Um, she has one where she sings with her bird, which I'm a big fan of. I love her. Um, <laughs> It's like a little um, uh, par parrot. I don't know. Shruti, exactly what, what kind of bird do you have? I'm, I what love kind birds. of bird and what's the name of your bird, please, if you can tell us? Um, but okay, let's have a listen to Shruti's performance. Unbelievably beautiful. Captivating. So nice, right? Oh. So low. Champagne problems. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Make sure you connect with Julia uh, via email so that we can get you a t-shirt. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Speaking of t-shirts, we don't have them in here. Ooh, very exciting announcement without any visual clue, cues, clues um, to get. <laughs> but Shoot. There will be new merch for Black Friday. Yes, we have a, a, a hoodie mm -hmm. and a t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> and the hoodie is like, mm, it's this really pale purple. It's very pretty. And it's, it's so, so comfy. It's like oh. so soft on the inside. And the t-shirt is white with some stuff on it. Yeah, with text on it. You'll see. You'll see. It'll be great. Now, air this, horns for Mike. Air okay. horns, yay. <laughs> Okay, if you guys have questions, make sure you throw them into the questions tab so that we don't miss okay. them. So Anna was asking, is it possible to sing with vibrato on short notes? Yes. Um, I mean, 
you can't do as many, you know, like oscillations. Ah, uh, I don't know, like. Um. Ah, 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 ah. I don't know. You just get less vibrato. Yeah, you just get a, a tiny short vibrato. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dagmar, I am working on my singing cake design still. <laughs> We're, singing cake that on. dream hasn't died. Okay. Um, listen, if anybody wants to design some fan art with singing cakes, yeah. feel free <laughs> to yeah. send it our way. 100%. Oh, speaking of cake, Truman brought in cake yesterday. Oh. His mom made this cake, and it was like this most epicest. That's not a word. Yeah, the most, the most epic. epic. You heard us right. It, it was a Kit Kat cake. <laughs> what? It was a Kit Kat How cake. How did I miss this? I was here. And he let me have a little piece of it. Oh. Good. Great. Made my day so happy. Mm. Julia, good. I'm still waiting for the Let It Be Hallelujah Survival shirts. <laughs> Mike, we're, so we were going to make shirts that say, I made it through the singing method and all I learned was <laughs> Hallelujah. Like this, this, let it, this Leonard Cohen song. Just let something. it be. <laughs> That's hilarious. That was funny. Um, okay, we got a couple more. Um, yeah, okay. Actually, Damien was commenting on Sinatra's very mild, almost mm. undetectable vibrato. Mm -hmm. um, you're right. So, like, I'm... It's puzzling to me how vibratos can be so different from person to person. Because you're yeah. right, I think, like, Frank Sinatra's vibrato is, like... Subtle. It's, like, really mellow, right? His whole voice is so, like, smooth and velvety, and, like, his vibrato is just like that. It's, like, it's slower. It's not as big. No. Versus, yeah, think of somebody like Dolly Parton. It's like, ah, I don't, I can't even do it as Jolene, fast as she does. Jolene, yeah. Jolene, Jolene, It's so fast. And it's natural to her. Like, she's not pushing no. that. She's just doing it. And I'm, I don't know exactly what causes, like, it's just everyone's voice is so different. And I think it has to do with our, each, like, our resonant spaces. Our unique shaping. Our, exactly, the size, the shape of our vocal cords. The amount of air that you're giving it so you can like those are things you can play with of like does my vibrato change if i'm giving it like a little more air a little more oomph em like energy does my vibrato change like depending on the vowel that i'm singing or the space that i'm making or not you know um yeah play with it play with but it. i agree sinatra is very beautiful of course Mm. Author, what's the method of singing a vibrato differently if necessary versus high and low voices? I don't think that if you have a high or low voice, I don't think that's going to really impact the way you would execute vibrato. I think naturally when you are singing lower notes, the vibrations might mm -hmm. be a little bit slow. Like you might get a, a slower vibrato on lower notes. I think that's true because lower notes are vibrating at a lower frequency, right? So it would make sense that the vibrato corresponds to that, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, there's probably a limit to how fast you can... Ee, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, right? Weird. That was a fun <laughs> moment. Yeah. <laughs> Holly from Cali. When singing in a group, is it best not to use vibrato? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing worse than like a chorus of Broadway singers. <laughs> That like all have this giant fire engine vibrato. It's it's just bad. All at the like, same time. It's when like when multiple singers are singing vibrato and they are not lining up because they don't because everyone's vibrato is like at a slightly different rate. Right? It's it's not good. So generally, if you're in a choir, you kind of want to keep it pretty straight as much as you can. Or it else can become no a blending. cacophony. Yeah. So for blending, especially, I would recommend. Less vibrato. So if, if you we can. were, if we were to, um, oh, there's a good question from our YouTube audience, okay. Christopher Jackson. How soon will you see results from vocal exercises? Tell us, Lisa. Well, you're. Can I see them tomorrow? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, it's kind of like when you go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, you are gonna go to the gym for your first workout, and maybe the result of that first workout is that you just feel amazing about yourself. Right. <laughs> um, and maybe the result of like. 12 workouts is that you're starting to notice a few little differences, right. but maybe they're not like I'm ripped in my triceps. Maybe the difference is more like I feel more right. solid. Or, or I feel like a little stronger. Yeah. Um, so like it, it's kind of like that. Your voice is a muscle, right? So we're developing, we're developing that. We're developing our ear. So there's a lot of moving parts, but I've also gotten into vocal lessons where an adjustment and doing the exercise correctly mm. has impacted my ability to sing. Right. Immediately. Yeah. 
So it's kind of like you could take um, like the puffy cheeks exercise for an example. And if you were to try and sing like a big note, like and you work on that for a minute, exercise helped me immediately lock right. into the place I needed to be for that note. That feels like instant results. Yeah, so it's yeah. a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a very good answer, Lisa. Thank you. I was <laughs> impressed with myself on that one, actually. Um, yeah. Mike is wanting to know what the technique behind the ooh on Twist and Shout by the Beatles. Is there vibrato in there? Um, are you talking about vibrato, Mike, or are you just talking about that harmony. in general? building a seven chord that's building a seven chord and it's awesome <laughs> um is, is that does that answer your question not the, the end of the verse phrases Ooh, mm. just dance come on come on come on come on baby work it all out work it all out you know you twist so good it's just probably so not in a ton of vibrato no you twist oh do you mean them kind of sliding the note is that what you mean uh, twist so fine Come on, come on, come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. I don't get it all out. <laughs> no, it's jush. What? <laughs> They're really high? Oh. There must be like a wow moment in there. Wow! Is that what we're talking that must, about? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> Just a little. Okay. okay. Let's try not to get cancelled for this. Yeah. YouTube, don't cancel us. Is it just a scream? I think it's just a scream. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just talking about a scream. Or that. Because that's the vibrato moment. We got two things happening here. Otherwise, it's a fry scream. Yes, Lee's got that. So the ooh is just like a ooh. But it's really free and it definitely has vibrato. Ooh. I like doing a vibrato on an ooh. It seems to come out easier. Ooh. It does. I don't know. <laughs> and then the other thing, wow! It's like you have to have enough of like a ah, ah. Like yeah. it's, I, I have not mastered that myself. <laughs> I had a very long conversation with Darcy about that. Um, recently and it's like some people's like they're just their vocal cords it just will it just works yeah some people it's an emotional demand and then you get that sound naturally and other yeah. people just have the technique nailed and other people can't they just hurt themselves mm -hmm. so we'll circle back to that but yeah that high was ooh is definitely right. a little bit of a battle moment yeah. good ear for that mike which i think so for a guy if you're like in a head voice but not a not a breathy like make it no. connected and, and strong and then see if you can add vibrato. Yeah. Um, there was a question from Doug. He was saying, at my current level, I always have to practice the song over and over and over until I get the pitches close to correct. Mm -hmm. A question for you. How long does it take you until you have a presentable version of a song that's entirely new to you? Like learning a song mm -hmm. from never having heard it before to presentable. <laughs> uh, uh, that's hard. It depends. Like. I can do that in, in like an hour. It won't be amazing, but it'll be like, I could sing this here and it will be fine or 10 minutes, but that's just because it's different for everybody. I've been singing my entire right. life. So when I approach a song, pitch is not usually um, something that I'm having to work on. For me, it's more like, am I having balance on the right notes? And do I know the song? Can I, do I memorize it? And that's another thing Doug to maybe clarify is like, pitch is one thing. So that's, if I hear a note, can I accurately recreate it? Um, and just the other, the other thing that you may be struggling with, just learning the song, right. like knowing where to go. Um, and that's different than pitch. Then you're not really struggling with like being accurate. It's just, you don't know it yet. Right. So like learning a song from absolute scratch to, to make sure you're getting every single note right. It really depends. I don't know. I think if you're like really into music, um, songs become more and more predictable, <laughs> like in yes. terms of the chord structure and also just the, the melody flow. So it gets faster and faster to learn something from scratch. Um, so keep playing like 
Playing other instruments, guitar, Dog. piano, they're going to help you to uncover chord progressions and patterns. Use the ear training exercises. I wonder if you read any music. Yeah. Then, because um, I, don't, I know you play different instruments. And so if you're learning a song from scratch, even if you're not amazing at sheet music, um, it can be really helpful just to like try to find, I don't know, a free version of some sheet music or even just a preview of the like, music notes preview. Oh, yeah, just that's so you can music. Sing. Yeah. So... This will speed up your like the learning of a song so much. <laughs> Julia will seriously, it'll be a song that I know. We did this the other day with our Christmas song that we're gonna be releasing to you guys that we're not talking we about can yet. Tease it. <laughs> um, so we're we're giving you guys a Christmas song to do. It's mm -hmm. gonna be pretty epic. Mm -hmm. And so even though I know the song super well, Julia still got music for me. Right, and I had to follow it because otherwise it wouldn't have been. You perfect. rely on like your memory from a hundred years ago of your yeah. current, like right. So yeah. this way, like you can see exactly, hey, like oh, this note's dotted and this is short. And this is short. And, like, and this actually, is... the melody repeats here, but not here. You know, so like singing along with sheet music just to solidify all the notes is really, really helpful. And then I feel like after you know the notes, there's so many more steps to making that song presentable, not just in having the right notes and the right. Yes rhythm it's like now we can think about once you have that in place now we can think about how do we sing it and next is memorizing the lyrics and next is like actually performing it like connecting with your audience so there's so many steps so many <laughs> steps you learned the whole the journey um separate ways song never heard weekend. that song i had never heard that song before and they're like well, let's do separate ways it's like well because they're all drummers and guitarists so like, this is amazing <laughs> we're like, yeah this is the best song ever and I still had to look at the lyric sheet, and I still didn't do it perfectly, but I was like, I was able to get through it. That's so good. Uh, Mike, yes, I just learned that I had the weekend. I know. People and I had, really it's not like I had heard it before. I literally never heard the song. <laughs> it's such a good song. <laughs> it's a good song. It's, um, yeah, Tim just wants Freebird. That's all Tim wants. Freebird! <laughs> we will we'll, uh, suggest it <laughs> we'll put, for the next we'll combined live stream. We'll put a request up for you. Um, Christopher Jackson from YouTube has a question, Lisa, oh. and I'm hoping you can answer this. Mm. Or maybe some of the Singio members can answer this. Why should I choose Singio's Ooh. program over others on the internet? That's a very good question. Um, definitely very biased here. <laughs> but what I love about Singio, there's lots of things I love about Singio, but our approach is very much trying to teach you how to understand your instrument. Um, because it doesn't matter if you, you do a million exercises, but if you don't know what you're doing and why you're doing it and how that actually can change and impact your voice, then you're not really doing anything that is useful in the long term. Sure, you might strengthen your voice, but you need to know why you're doing it. You need to know why you have the struggles you do with your voice. So our method's very based on educating every single singer. This is your voice. This is how it works. And this is you, the unique things about your voice. Mm -hmm. So we have all the lessons and we've got all the resources to practice, but we also include student reviews with our membership. So um, you have access to us. So we encourage you all to record yourself singing, send those in. Um, we're going to go do some reviews later today. And then we mm -hmm. watch them and then we record a video back for you. So it's literally like having a vocal coach included with right. the, all the other learning you can do independently. And then in the forums and in our chats, like if you're in the members area now, there's like everybody knows each other. Yeah. Everybody knows what everybody's working on, what they're struggling with, what they're excited about. So we have thousands and thousands and thousands of conversations happening in there where people are posting their videos and the community is encouraging and sharing and inspiring each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's not just here's your videos, bye. It's very much like here's the, here's what you need to know and here's the community to be around you to help get you to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I have to say about here's that. Here's what the members are saying in the chat. The forums, the coaches. Paul says, um, because it works. You know, we did some, like, focus mm. groups a few months back, mm -hmm. and we talked to a bunch of different members on, like, uh, I just remember the one question of, like, what were your goals? And all of the people that we spoke to said, you know, Singio has helped me reach my goal or has helped me get closer to my goal, and it was really encouraging. So... It works. <laughs> because the Singio fam is the best. Singio is like a family that doesn't judge you and supports you more than you could ever imagine. Because it's fun and, and motivation. You have real people having a look at what you're doing. Yeah, awesome community. It's true. Non-judgmental classroom. It is really the best place. I think I think that's where we leave it today. Paul friends. says, I mean, the the tens two lesson was a game changer of like oh. learning what your actually like your um kind of your built in habits are, 
and either how to like lean into those or maybe how to correct them <laughs> to, to have, you know, get to a balanced voice. Um, yeah, so many good comments. One word, cake, says Mike. Always the cake, oh my friends. Gosh. <laughs> Speaking of cake, I'm absolutely starving. Oh my gosh. Okay, hey, should we sing a song? To um, send yes, people out? I won't tell what you about, about all the food things. I wasn't going to talk about cake. I was going to talk about my breakfast, which I had like really recently. Breakfast cake? No. I gotta, I'm working on that though. Oh, yeah. I'm going to find a way. Okay. It has to be healthy. A breakfast must include at least 20 grams of protein. Mm. And I don't have, I have yet to have encountered a protein cake that is. No, no. You can make a cake with more eggs, maybe. That's. Does it count? I don't know. I found a way to put, I put egg whites in my oatmeal. Okay. And then I do like, I saute apples with brown sugar, pecans, and cinnamon, and I put that on top. That's <laughs> kind of cakey. Okay, are you playing That's this? That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I can just talk about food all, all, right. all day. We'll because stop. it was Joni Mitchell's birthday this year. Oh, she turned uh, 79, by the way. Um, amazing. Again, li living legend. Um, we thought we would end on the same song. Okay. I'm not ready. I can't, I can't even see it, Julia. Okay. Rose and flows of angel hair And ice cream castles in the air And feather canyons everywhere I have looked at clouds that way